Well, good morning, friends. Good morning, saints, on this Monday morning. And, if you can see it in the video, but it is snowing slowly. I don't know if there's a better term for that, but that's what I call it. The flakes are just, they're huge, but they're falling very slowly. It's like gravity is barely having an effect on them. I remember learning in science that maximum velocity or ultimate velocity was 9.8 meters per second squared. And that would happen after you fall, you know, a certain number of feet. You would reach terminal velocity, that's what it's called. And uh, that would be it. Well, these things are not falling at terminal velocity in any way. They are just floating. <laughs> and because I don't have my big, huge hunting boots on. All I have are my little leather boots. I'm going to stop right here and uh, I'm going to walk in the deep snow to go all the way down. So hope you're okay with that. Um, we're outdoors and uh, the most important thing is we're going to uh, open the Word of God and uh, hear from the Spirit of the Lord today. So that's what we're here for. Um, awesome. Oh, there's a squirrel on the left side there. Aren't they supposed to be hibernating? Like, what's up with that? All right, anyways. Have you been reading through the Bible with us? Um, beginning of the year, we uh, kind of set out as a congregation, as many as could join in and would join in to read through the Bible in a year. And if you're now thinking about it going, man, I should have done that. It's not too late to start. It just means that you're going to go through till, you know, January 31st next year, because uh, it's 365 days. So feel free to join in any time. Um, just grab the, uh, the paper. Um, if you want, I can send you a PDF. And uh, if you need to, print it out at home or whatever, and then just start on day number one. And maybe just use a pencil or something and cross out the day so that you know you've done it and you're not sitting here trying to do the math every day. But uh, whatever. Anyways, reading through the Bible in a year. Got to Genesis chapter 41. And something really struck out at me. And I thought, you know what? This is a, a verse or a thought or an attitude, a certain way of thinking that is really, really important. And we shouldn't forget it. And I hope this encourages you to step out in faith and hopefully do a lot more for the kingdom than you've ever done before. It's part of the story of Joseph. And this is Genesis chapter 41 is the context where the baker and the candlestick maker were um, in prison. They had their dreams or visions, whatever they were. And uh, the... Uh, Pharaoh ended up having a dream, and he couldn't find anybody to interpret his dream or to tell him what it meant. And uh, I believe it was the baker turned around and said, Hey, um, I know somebody who can help you with this. And uh, pointed him towards Joseph, and Joseph gets pulled out of prison and gets all cleaned up and everything else. And Pharaoh says, Okay, so come on, do your thing. And here was Joseph's response. And I want you to see this and let the Spirit of God call you to be a Joseph. Please. Here's what the Spirit of the Lord said, uh, recorded in Genesis 41, verse 16. I cannot do it. All right, first off, <laughs> get this golden opportunity to get out of prison, um, and uh, or at least a you know, show off God. And Joseph's first response was, uh, yeah, you want your dream interpreted? Guess what? I can't do it. That is critically important to remember, and I'll explain here in just 30 seconds why. Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Pharaoh went on to explain the dream. Joseph, receiving from the Lord, went on to interpret it, and, uh, well, the story changes forever. Not just for Joseph, but for the people of Israel. For the whole nation. 
that was the, the turning point. One of the most critical moments in Israel history. Because Joseph said, I cannot do it, but my God can. Friends, you might have friends or loved ones or neighbors who need something incredible, need a miracle, whatever that might mean. You and I need to remember that it's not you and I that can do this. Come humbly before them and humbly before the Lord. Let your humility be genuine, recognizing your limitations, but don't stop there because offer them the Lord. Offer them what God has for them. But God will. I love that line. But God will. Friends, that's critical. Our God has so much to offer to those around us. He's waiting for a messenger. He's waiting for somebody to call on him. Someone to intercede. Someone to introduce God into the situation. To invite him in. And he will. God will. So let's be the Josephs. And introduce God into the story all around us. And the lives of those around us. Let's pray. Father, might our eyes forever be on the one who died for me. Might I always see what God can do and will do in a situation. Give me those eyes of faith, I pray. Help me to be bold and to humbly introduce you, O oh God, into the lives of those people around me, into their situations, into their need, into their desperation. So that you can step in and you can do what you want to do to show them your glory, to transform their lives, to redeem lost situations. Oh God, let me be a Joseph, I pray. Have your own sweet way in our lives, oh God, as we submit to you humbly submit to you and let you reign let you be almighty it's who you are but father we we invite you today and this week to come in and to to be the strong arm thank you for the privilege of introducing you into these situations around us. We love you, Lord. We honor you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints, on this Monday. Have a fantastic week. Cheers.